those of you that don't know me, uh, my name is Sammy Jilla. I'm the academic relations manager for Aspen Dental Management. Um, we have Dr. Roma Patel, who is a Georgia alum. Uh, we also have Dr. Christie, who is surprising us with his uh, attendance today. I'm super glad he could make it. Um, he's been with Aspen for a while. I'm gonna let them introduce themselves here in a few minutes. Um, but I know one of the questions that was actually asked is, uh, what is a DSO? So I just really wanna go over that before we get started. Um, so I work for Aspen Dental Management, which is the dental support organization. Um, the organization that supports all of the doctor owned practices across the US. Um, so we're just providing them with support with anything that's non-clinical. Um, so in terms of how many there are, there's over 800 practices in over 40 uh, states. Um, and this is really just an opportunity for you all to get a better understanding of what Aspen's about. What does the journey look like? How can you better prepare yourself coming out of dental school? Um, you know, pick their brains for advice. Um, but without further ado, I'll let uh, Dr. Roma go ahead and introduce herself and just give us a background um, and kind of where you are with, the, with Aspen right now. Hey guys, I'm Roma Patel. I graduated from what used to be MCG in 2015. And since I left, I started uh, working with Aspen and I've been with Aspen for, for five years and now I'm in right outside of Savannah, Georgia in Pooler. Great. And Dr. Christie, you're still on mute, um, but if you could do the same, just provide us with, you know, kind of what your background is. Um, I know you've been with Aspen for a while now, uh, kind of where you graduated from and, you know, where you are now. Yeah. Uh, hey, I'm Dr. Christie. Uh, I graduated dental school, I guess, in 06, so it's getting older as one would say, but anyway. Uh, and I started with Aspen after about uh, 2007 up in New Hampshire. And, through my journeys with them, I'm now down uh, across South Carolina and, and uh, in the Savannah market with Georgia, where Aroma, as she already mentioned, is, is one of my partners in that market. Great. Um, and Dr. Aroma actually just had a baby, so I just want to give her a quick, you know, a huge thank you for joining us, even though she just had a baby and she's on leave. Um, but I think, you know, the first question or the best question to ask to start from what you guys have uh, submitted so far is, you know, what advice would you give to, you know, a dental student to be prepared coming out of dental school? Um, Dr. Christie, do you want to take that one first? I mean, my biggest thing is just being open to learning. I mean, as much as you guys learn in dental school, there's, you know, a lot more for us all to learn. I'm still learning. Um, you know, we are well continue to keep open mind and learns because there's a million different ways to do everything. And um, I mean, that's pretty much it. <laughs> um, I don't know, Roma had. <laughs> yeah, Dr. Roma, what do you think um, would be some good advice for a dental student to be prepared? Yeah, I'll definitely second Jeb on that. But also, I mean, it's scary getting out of dental school. I know Jeb, it's been a while for you, but I'm kind of fresh. So um, it's definitely scary. I mean, the first day I was there, I was asking my um, mentor if she wanted to look at my prep after I'd prepped the tooth. And she's like, no, you know, but it's scary. But like Jeb said, it's open to learning. I mean, you're not going to know everything right out of dental school and you're still not going to know no matter how many years you're going to practice. So it's just going in, you know, with an open mind and learning and trying to hone in on your dental skills. Yeah. Great guys. Thank you. Um, and just really quick, those of you that are just now joining, um, if you look at the bottom of the screen, it'll say Q and A. Um, you can click on that and you can type out your questions and I'll be able to ask it to uh, Dr. Roma and Dr. Christie. Um, but the next question here is, you know, what does a new dentist find frustrating? Um, I know Dr. Roma, you're a lead dentist, Dr. Christie, you own multiple practices. Um, and you guys are constantly mentoring associates, but um, what is something that you would say, you know, a new dentist finds frustrating? Dr. Roma, you wanna take that one to start? Yeah, um, I think time management is usually a little bit more frustrating because right out of dental school, I mean, you were seeing like two, maybe max three patients a day. A um, Little bit more, you know, fast pace in practice, um, but I think it's frustrating. And then also, 
not knowing how to do everything. I think um, when even I'll speak for myself, we're coming right out of school. I was hoping, okay, I'm going to know how to do it all, but you have to, you know, have patience with yourself. And I think that's the biggest thing is, you know, making sure that you were able to give yourself some time to learn. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Dr. Christie, is there anything you want to add on to that? Um, I mean, the only other thing I think that we all find frustrating is, as Norma said, is when you try and you fail and, um, and it probably happens in, in dental school too, but in the real world, sometimes you can't please everybody. So sometimes when patients are frustrated with you, it's, it's understanding and they're not necessarily frustrated at you. They're just the situation. And, and as we all know, it's, you know, dental practices aren't like the favorite place that people want to be always. So, um, we've all heard that patients come in everywhere, including in dental school. I'm sure you've heard. Uh, not, not just so you know, I, I hate the dentist, not you personally, but I, I hate the dentist. So, you know, it's something that we all have to overcome. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely not a comfortable place to be. Um, so this next question here is how is your transition from student dentist to a licensed practicing dentist? Um, did you feel well prepared? What were some challenges you faced? Um, Dr. Chris, you want to take that one to start your transition? I mean, I think I felt pretty prepared. I mean, I don't know. Uh, it's you got a base of stuff, but uh, unfortunately, yeah, you got to go out and do do trial and error and, and kind of learn on your own some. And what we try to do, what Dr. Patel and I sell try to do, is help you learn, you know, through mistakes that we've made. So, you know, I try to identify, you know, something that a new grad might be doing and trying to tell them, hey, look, great, you know, it might be a good idea, but you know, I've seen that it's it's not the best way to go about it. And uh, that's how we all learn. Hopefully, is through either somebody else's mistakes or through our own. Um, and I just try to fast track that and, you know, help people kind of grow and you know, sell faster um, because of what I've learned over the years. Yeah, absolutely. Dr. Patel, do you want to add anything? Yes, I agree with what Jeb said too, but the good thing about with, you know, when you sign with Aspen is that they give you a mentor. So the transition was a little bit easier, I think, um, because you're not just, you know, okay, here you go, go ahead and just start practicing because you actually have someone helping you and guiding you. So like Jeb said, if you know there's a mistake, then you actually know about it before you make a mistake because the mentors already talked to you about, okay, this is how I would treat the case, this, that, and the other, and always there for, you know, help you with any questions that you have. So I think that it definitely made it a little bit easier. Like I said before, it's scary. Um, it's not something that's easy because I felt like, yeah, you know, we get the basics in dental school, but practicing is a lot different um if you're just coming right out of school yeah absolutely um and then somebody just to add on to that question saying what were some challenges that you faced um dr patel is there any specific challenges that you faced or any things that you went through that you could help dental students kind of learn from um i think it's just you know, like working on your skills, your dental skills, I think that's def definitely a big challenge. Um, and like what Jeb said earlier too, is like dealing with patients because I feel like in dental school, the patients know that it's going to take you some long time to, you know, finish this procedure and this, that, the other, and you're in a learning environment. It's a little bit different when you're in practice because patients can be, you know, mean sometimes. So <laughs> challenges of dealing with patients and also like learning to, you know, become faster or learning more your more of your dental skills i think that definitely is a challenge usually yeah um definitely dr christie what are some challenges you faced yeah it's i mean that's going on what she said and it's although it's been a while for me but you'll constantly get the are you old enough to be a doctor uh from about every other patient when you're first in school uh they, as she said you expect it and, you know when patients come to the dental school they know everybody's students so Back out in the real world, they'll ask, like, are you just here on a road? Like, are you, are you in high school sometimes? I mean, they'll ask the strangest questions. Um, I don't get that anymore. But <laughs> I did for a while. Um, but, yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, great. So the next question here is kind of asking about, I guess, the journey. It's saying, what does uh, the growth potential look like with Aspen? Um, Dr. Christie, do you want to take that one first? Uh, well, there's, uh, there is growth potential. Um, you know, when I started with company, there's a hundred offices and there's now 850. So the company is constantly growing. Um, I started up in new England originally with Aspen, but as the company's grown, I've uh, kind of moved around with it and grown with it. 
uh, Dr. Patel, when she started out originally in Columbus, Georgia, um, and then, you know, relocated to the Savannah market, when, you know, when there was an Aspen there, so she was able to stay within the company and grow there. So, um, I, you know, we've had doctors that have started in one state and moved out to Texas when the company opens up and so on and so forth. So, um, as life changes, fortunately, as this, this company is pretty much, well, it now is coast to coast. So, uh, there's new opportunities arising pretty much daily or weekly with us. Yeah. Um, and there, and in terms of like what the journey looks like, most dental students will come on as an associate, um, and then you'll be promoted to what's called a managing clinical director. Um, also an MCD, it's just a fancy term for lead dentist. Um, and then there's also the opportunity to, you know, own a practice or partner in a practice, um, like what Dr. Patel is doing with Dr. Christie. Um, so here's a very general question. Um, why did you go into dentistry? Uh, Dr. Christie, I've actually never heard this story. Um, why did you go into dentistry? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I think it was, uh, I, I was in a, an honorary society and I went to, I think my junior year and um, there was some dentists that came in and or from somebody from the dental school and started talking about, you know, being a dentist and, and I don't know, for some reason I was like, you know what, that sounds, most of my friends were all going to medical school, but I was like, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to try this dental thing out. And, and so I knew I'd want to do something in, you know, medicine related one way or another. I, I mean, I figured that much, but I thought, you know what, dentistry might be the best to go. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah. Um, and then Dr. Patel, I don't know if you're preoccupied at the moment. Um, you know, why did you go into dentistry? Um, I actually have a legit story. I got made fun of uh, my teeth in high school by this guy. I was a freshman and I was in this elective course and there was this guy, he's a senior. He made fun of my teeth. And then, you know, from there I was like, oh shit, I need to get braces. And then, you know, I realized how much it affects your confidence. So I looked into dentistry. Yeah. Great. Um, okay. So the next question here is asking, um, how would you rate your work-life balance? Um, both of you are, you know, in completely different positions in terms of where you are with, uh, Aspen, um, as well, just in like in personal lives. Um, Dr. Christie, do you want to, um, address that? Uh, well, I, my, I do a lot of work, but I choose it <laughs> on my own. I mean, this is kind of the, what the, what I came into, but you know, originally when I was working with Aspen, you know, it was, it's a, you know, your classic like eight to five, nine to five job. It was, you know, I went, got up in the morning, went to work, went home and I was, I didn't have to worry about it because all the management side of it, all the business side of it is all handled through, you know, Aspen dental management. So all I did the first couple of years was kind of hone in my dental skills, learn as much as I could start, you know, getting better at talking to patients and understanding how, how to come up with, you know, predictable treatment plans and, and, and all that stuff and never worried about any of the business stuff. So, you know, that, uh, was a very good work-life balance. Um, as I progressed, I got more and more into the business side of it and, you know, I've expanded in, into multiple States. And so now, um, now I spend a lot of time doing work, but I love it. So, uh, but it's, uh, you know, something that I do and, um, you know, I, I love working with uh, newer doctors like Dr. Patel and seeing her grow and seeing her get success. And so, you know, that's a choice that I've made in my career path um, that I've wanted to do. So, yeah, absolutely. Um, and then Dr. Patel, um, how would you describe your work life balance? I think it's actually pretty good. And to be honest, um, you can kind of just choose how much you decide to work and choose how involved you want to be with the office, you know? So if you want to learn how the front is doing insurance and claims and scheduling and things like that, by all means do it. But then, you know, you're going to be a lot more involved in your office. Um, if that's something you don't want to do, then you can be extremely hands off. And like Jeb was saying, go work eight to five, nine to five, whatever, come home and not worry about it. Because if there's any issues, you have someone to take care of it. You know, with me being on maternity leave, you know, there's very little that I actually had to worry about with my office, you know, because things are being taken care of without having to bother me about things. So um, it's really nice having that management company take care of things for you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and there's just one, like, for example, like my role, 
um, is to support them in terms of recruiting. Um, I help the dental schools understand what this opportunity looks like. And then those of you that are interested, I help you get connected um, with the practice owners. Um, and that actually leads me into the next question that was asked here. Is a GPR preferred or are students out of school welcomed as equally? Um, you know, both Dr. Patel and Dr. Christie obviously hire uh, doctors for their offices. Um, but Dr. Christie, what do you look for? Do you look at GPRs um, more so than just regular dental students coming out of school or how, how do you hire people? Well, I'm kind of biased on that one. <laughs> um, I, and it's, it's not everyone, but I've seen a lot of, I've hired a lot of dentists over the years and I've seen many come um, from GPRs and um, it, they're no better off or sometimes worse off than the new grads because in their GPR, they kind of learned a little bit about everything all over the place and lost some of the basic skill sets, you know. Um, and I'm not saying it's everyone and it's not every GPR because I've had great success too. And um, and that's the same thing with dental schools. I've hired people from a dental school and they were great and same dental school, they weren't so great. So, but everybody has their own experience. But I can tell you one thing I do know is if you come and work for Aspen for a year, you're going to learn and be exposed to way more dentistry than you will in a GPR. And then, you know, after that year, you know, if Aspen's right for you, there's opportunity. If it's not right for you, all that information, everything you learned from your mentor, everything you're exposed to, uh, you know, you can take with you to wherever else, you know, your career takes you. Um, but, you know, that's just my own opinion. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I've heard other docs say that, you know, being in that office um, and having a going through a residency themselves, anybody that works at that practice with them also benefits from the residency they went through. Um, but Dr. Patel, what is a, a GPR something that you look for um, in someone when you're hiring? Not necessarily. I didn't do a GPR and I think that I'm was pretty well off um, practicing, you know, with Aspen. The good thing is that you are constantly be able to take C courses and things like that to further education. If there's something you want to do, then Jeb's never stopped me. You know, he actually took me to get implant certified. So now I'm placing implants. So it's not that GPR is required. Um, and I don't think I don't look any differently on, you know, doctors who want to work if they have GPR or not. Um, like Jeb said, I was doing things and seeing more types of cases a lot sooner than my classmates that were in GPR that were doing that. So it really just depends. If you want to do a GPR for a specific you know, reason or a program offers something you're looking for, let's say they're heavy on implant based, then go for it. If not, I don't think it matters really. Yeah. Um... There's another question here, just to add on to that, since we're on the topic, um, you know, what are things, characteristics that you do look for when making a decision to hire a doctor? Um, Dr. Patel, you want to take that one first? You know, I think that the biggest thing that, and I'll speak for Jeb too, is that we look for people who are people, you know, we're not looking for someone who is, you know, going to get check, be able to check off every box because we're looking for someone who is willing to learn and it's going to be a good fit with the team. Um, you know, that's always going to be open to constructive criticism. So we're really looking for someone who's going to be a team player and is just really, really willing to learn. Yeah, absolutely. And Dr. Chrissy definitely mentioned that earlier. Um, but is there anything you want to add on to that in terms of what you really look for? And, um, you know, a I mean, I kind of, she said, I mean, I look for people that are, you know, driven and have some, you know, long, you know, maybe long-term goals and want to grow and are hungry and eager to get out there and finally start their career, but also understand that, as she said, like, they don't know everything. I mean, I, none of us know everything. And, and, you know, again, my, you know, Roman, both myself, like we enjoy teaching and, you know, helping people learn through that. And we're still learning ourselves. So if, uh, you know, that's something that I look for is making sure that people are open mind, you know, to learning more and to, you know, learning through things. Um, and ultimately, you know, kind of want to grow and are hungry to go and start. And, you know, everybody's spent a lot of time in school at this point. So time to start start being an adult, I guess. <laughs> yeah. All right. Great. Thank you, guys. Um, here's a pretty long question. And just really quick to remind you guys, those of you that entered in a bit late, at the bottom of the screen, it should say Q&A. Um, and that's where you can type in your questions for 
uh, Dr. Patel and Dr. Christie. But this question here is asking, it says, I've heard that there's pressure on Aspen dentists to be extra productive. I've also heard the contracts have a base pay and then extra income is based on production. Is there any pressure on Aspen dentists to be extra productive other than increasing their personal income? Um, Dr. Christie, you wanna take that one first? I mean, I would, the reality is when we start associates, um, one of the first things we do is we go through a, a three week to four week uh, training program. And then after that, one of the first things we do is ask them what their pre time preferences are. And I've worked with many, many doctors. So I understand a brand new grad is not going to be anywhere near as time efficient as obviously somebody has been doing it for five or 10 years. Um, but we always see new grads. I see new grads, you know, and everything else is it's an investment period. You know, there's that time that they're learning and especially initially, um, they all, any new doc is coming in as a, as a second doctor in an office, ideally, which means there's already a doctor there probably doing, you know, the same amount of work already. And you're just coming in to help, you know, help out in that regard. And then ultimately, obviously we're trying to grow the practices, but, um, as I've said before, and I know Roman, know this, the patients that we primarily see, they have a ton, just like the dental student you know, at school, they have a ton of what needs. So it's not a matter of somebody over your shoulder trying to find and say, oh, you didn't do this crown or how come you didn't, it's, it's, they're staring you in the face. There's a lot going on and the patients need a lot of help. And it's just trying to kind of identify and, and see what their options may be and trying to come up with a comprehensive plan to get them out of that cycle that they've been on and get them down towards a better path. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and then Dr. Patel, is there anything you want to add on to that in terms of uh, pressure to be extra productive? And it says I've heard, um, so I'm assuming this is things that they're hearing at their school. <laughs> well, um, the Georgia Dental School is notorious for things like that. And to be honest, when I was there, that's really what I heard too, is, you know, Aspen bad, don't go, corporate bad. But it's nothing like that. I've never been forced. You know, at the end of the day, it's my license. And what I treatment plan for a patient is on my license. And no one's ever forced me to be more productive by, okay, treatment planning more crowns and doing this. Definitely want to be more productive. I mean, if you're my associate, I'm obviously not going to, you know, like Jeb said, you're going to be slower. I get it. But I also don't want you to be, you know, lollygagging around while I'm busting a behind, you know, in the office. So at the end of the day, too, in the, you know, the production, the profit share that you get is based off of pool of what I produce and what the associate produces. So it's not based off of just what the associate produces. So we're both working together, working hard you know, driving the business. And that's where we get our profit share from. It's a combination. It's not just one person working harder than the other. Yeah, absolutely. And that's something that's not common in terms of like the pay structure. Um, and somebody's actually asking what is the average associate make? Um, this is probably a question I get on every single ask me anything event. Um, but Dr. Christie, do you want to touch on kind of how the pay structure works? And obviously, you know, what an associate can you know, expect. Well, I think Roma was kind of touching base on it um, uh, to some degree. So typically as, as the question, uh, there is a daily guarantee that we do have so that, you know, you're as an associate coming in, you're not so worried about what you produce or don't produce. You know, you're guaranteed no matter what to make a certain amount of money. Um, ideally, if you know, you contribute to that practice and the practice is growing, then, you know, there's, there's incentive to grow the practice. We want everybody to kind of see that as, you know, any type of business, um, whether that's the associate or the clinical director or partners, you know, we would try to grow stuff together. Um, as far as the averages, it, there's, I mean, you know, Sam, you probably have those numbers more than I do when you count all the incentives and stuff. I mean, if you're a full-time doctor, you're going to make as an associate, probably making on average anywhere from 140, to probably 180 depending on the office, um, the managing clinical directors, that number jumps quite a bit. Um, where, uh, you know, I've got offices that are, you know, making 220, 240 as a managing clinical director up to 400. So it really, it really depends, um, you know, how successful the offices are, how you're growing the business, um, so on and so forth. Yeah. Um, Dr. Patel, is there anything you want to add on to that in terms of compensation? No, I think he covered it. Yeah. Um, just one thing to add myself is something that I've often heard from, um, you know, friends that are dentists is the 
the dentist is what makes the practice. So you really, you know, in terms of your profit, it's, it's up to you. It's based on how you perform and, um, you know, how you treat patients and um, that sort of thing. But to go on to the, the next question here, um, what do you enjoy most about working for Aspen? And also, what do you enjoy the least? Um, Dr. Patel, do you want to take that one first? Um, I think the least, and it definitely is, I think with any kind of practice, whether it's, you know, DSO or private practice is the patients there, we can definitely get difficult. And like Jeb was saying, you know, I still get, Oh, are you even, you know, old enough to be my dentist? And did you just graduate or how many years of experience do you have? So that kind of thing, I just kind of follows you no matter where you go. Um, but I do enjoy that. I get a lot of support from Aspen. Um, no matter what it is, whether it's Jeb, who I haven't seen in months, or, you know, someone all the way to my director, if I need something, they're just a call away. And the other thing, too, is, you know, we meet so many other doctors from other Aspens, and they become longtime friends, and you can shoot them a text about anything, and they'll be able to help you through a case. So I think the network that you build with the Aspen community is awesome. Um, it's something that I don't think you can get in prior practice. Yeah, absolutely. And then Dr. Christie. What do you enjoy the most and the least? Um, well, I love that, you know, the kind of the role I am now, I'm able to kind of travel around and, and teach doctors and um, kind of be on the road all the time and work in different areas and, um, and really see them grow and develop and, and then, you know, take a, you know, Roma when she came aboard as an associate to a managing clinical director to a, a partner to a partner in a second office and who knows where that continues to go. Um, so that's what I enjoy. What I don't like, this guy, Sammy Gilla, working with him. <laughs> it's, probably, it's, probably, it's probably the traveling all the time and being on the road all the time. It's like, I love it. And then other days I'm like, oh, when am I getting home? <laughs> yeah. Um, do you, but again, I do that to myself. So. Yeah. So do you want to explain a little bit as to why you have to travel so much? Uh, well, it's... Well, as we kind of talked about, I kind of started with the company as an associate and I grew up to um, the managing clinical directors, as uh, Sammy said, and then um, became an owner in a practice in New England and uh, started working with other doctors and growing and, and uh, have grown with the company and, and um, had them kind of build more offices for me. And now I'm in the Savannah market and all the way up to Myrtle Beach and then over out in the Greenville market in South Carolina. So where I currently am. So um, I kind of travel around office to office and work with the doctors, whether they be brand new doctors right out of school that need clinical help, which is what I worked on with a new brand new grad today. And then um, the day before I worked with one of my doctors who has been around for about three years and, you know, has the dental skills down, but is now trying to work more on, you know, kind of interpersonal skills with the staff and how to uh, kind of deal with some of the dramas that can occur in every, in every uh, staff or business. And, um, and all the way up to some of my partners with some, whether it's more advanced dentistry or um, other business opportunities, working with them on that. So it really depends in specific to each doctor and each team. Um, and sometimes I'm just covering the vacation. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. I'm sure running multiple practices has its own challenges. Um, and okay. Here's the, here's our next question. Somebody's asking, what options did you look into coming out of school? Um, Dr. Patel. I actually didn't look at any other options. I think Aspen, there was another DSL I was looking at, but that, those were the only ones. And then um, to be 100% honest, it was just a short-term um, opportunity for me. And I didn't think I was gonna like it so much, um, but here I am five years later. Yeah, and uh, Dr. Christie, what about you? Well, I actually worked in a private practice for about six months um, and nothing against private practice, but it was a situation where it was a fee-for-service practice and it was right when the housing market was going bad in like 07. So I would have patients come in that uh, didn't realize they had to put all the money up front and uh, they wouldn't be able to afford it. So, you know, the crown prep would cancel or I was scheduled to have three fillings and was, they'd only do one. And I was getting paid solely on commission. There was no guarantee or anything. So there were some days where I made like eight bucks. So soon into that, we kind of realized that, you know, that office couldn't support two doctors 
because it was the first time they were, you know, he had, he'd expanded to a second doctor. So I kind of scrambled and I had a couple offers similar to that, but I was kind of like, well, let me try this Aspen thing out. And I'd heard, you know, bad things about it as well. And DSOs are bad and all that stuff. And, um, uh, but I thought, Hey, worst case scenario, I'll do it for a year, learn as much as I can and then go do my own thing. And, you know, I came aboard and as you know, Dr. Patel said, it was, I learned from a mentor. There was nobody over my shoulder, you know, telling me anything other than her just saying, Hey man, if I were you, I'd probably, you know, do that MOD as opposed to a DO. It looks like there's mesial decay as well. And I'd be like, Oh, you're right. Or, you know, simple things like that. Um, and you know, just the same stuff we learned in school as Roma said this before. And I've had this before when I went back to my own dental school and some cl classmates were or not, or not classmates, but some students were asking me, well, I heard you have to do this. Or I heard you do that. I heard you. And I'm like, where are you hearing this from? And they would name a professor. And I was like, that's funny because if there's anybody that taught me how to do dentistry, it was that professor. Like we didn't go to Aspen school of dentistry. We went to dental school, just like they, just like you guys are. And we learned and then took that to this career and, and, and used it. And Aspen has just been there to support us from the business side of it, which, you know, at this point I know a lot more, but when I was first out of school, I knew nothing to do with, you know, whether we should take insurances or not, whether, how to pay electricity bill, whether this is a good real estate property or not, and how to hire somebody or train somebody or replace somebody. And so they take a lot of that off your, off your deck. So you can just focus on the dentistry part. Yeah, absolutely. And then there's a follow-up question here. It's asking, why did you choose Aspen? Um, I feel like you guys did touch on that a little bit, um, but you know, I guess what was, you know, your decision maker, what was the situation that made you make that decision? Um, Dr. Patel. Um, sorry. I was looking at another DSO and they did not give me the opportunity to grow. So in other words, I would never be able to own the practice or be a partner in that practice. And um, I think with Aspen, what was so attractive was I did have the chance to grow. And whether that was going from associate to a lead dentist to a partner or owner, I did have that opportunity whenever I was ready. Yeah. And then Dr. Christie, what about you? What made you make the decision? Well, if you really want to know, I was married to a classmate and uh, she wanted to work in the same practice with me. So Aspen was the only place I could find that was looking for two doctors in the same practice at the same time. So <laughs> that didn't work out that well. But for all you guys that are on there that are dating classmates, that's fine. It's all going to work out great. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that actually. <laughs> Um, <laughs> so, all right, our next question that just came in, uh, do you just pay in a certain amount each month to own in the future? How does that work if another dentist working at the office with you is also doing the same thing? Um, so I guess just go over a little bit in terms of ownership and how that process works, Dr. Christie. Um, well, initially if you're going to, you know, purchase the office outright, um, you know, just like anything, you would take out a business loan, um, which you can use any bank you want, but Aspen does have a relationship with a few banks that kind of expedite it because they already kind of know the value of the business. So they're pretty much almost guaranteed to get approved for those loans. Um, if it's a situation where like for the first office that Dr. Patel and I were partnered in, I had already purchased the office outright. So just like any business, she took out a loan to kind of buy a percentage of that office for me. Um, and then the second office that we're partnered in, we actually kind of took out that loan together because we went into it as business partners from the get go. Yeah. Um, and then Dr. Patel, is there anything you want to add on to that? Nope. Okay. Um, okay. Another question. Uh, Dr. Roma, you said Aspen allows you to grow when you're ready. How do they evaluate your growth? to decide to let you become a partner or owner. Um, yeah. Well, I think that's a question for Jeb because he's one who approached me for partnership. So, um, you know, to be honest, I think that if you work hard, when, when I started, even as an associate, I treated the practice like it was mine and treated the patients like they were mine. Um, you know, I didn't care that Jeb owned the practice and he also gave me total autonomy in running the practice the way I want to. And um, that was important for me because it made me feel like it was mine. And, you know, you just work hard and I think the opportunities come to you. And then he, you know, asked, well, kind of the lead dentist position fell into my 
lap because the other guy left, but I think it was a good move. Yeah. I don't know. Just elaborate. Um, no, I mean, like with me, uh, if I'm looking for a partner and, and Aspen is the same way, but from a bigger level is, you know, I'm looking for someone that I always say it's like, you know, they come aboard and I kind of date them for a while, you know, make sure that they're happy and I'm happy and everybody's getting along great. And then maybe we get engaged and then, you know, whereas we're going through and then hopefully we get married and hopefully it lasts, right? Business wise, it's lasted better than my personal life, but I should stop going there. Um, <laughs> but you know, with uh, Dr. Patel, she came in, she worked hard and, you know, uh, you, you want to reward someone like that. So um, you want to incentivize them more and give them a bigger reason to help continue to, you know, take ownership in the practice for real. And, um, and that's the same way, you know, asking this from a higher level is, you know, they get questions all the time. They, they literally say people, dentists will call in and practicing for 30 years and say, I want to buy a practice tomorrow from you. And they're like, we you know, don't even know you because we want to make sure that we're all on the same page and we're all looking out for not just, uh, th that's one thing about being in, in a branded dentistry. And again, you, 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 you hear bad things is we want to make sure that everybody's on board is doing the best they can for patients and, and, you know, ourselves and each other and making sure that we're, you know, we're all, we're all doing good work and, and we're, we're doing the best we can to help patients and, and to keep uh, things going forward. So, um, yeah, if you come aboard and you know, you're a right fit and you're happy and you're doing good work and you're working hard, there's certainly opportunities. Yeah. So to just add on to that, like, how did that work for you? How were you approached to buy a practice? What did you have to go through in order to have that opportunity presented to you? When I joined Aspen, I didn't even understand or know that ownership wasn't even a possibility. That wasn't something that I was even aware of. Um, but really I just came in and, and as Roma said, I just worked hard and I always have. I, when I worked as a cook in high school, I worked hard. I mean, I just, this is my mentality. If I'm going to be some, doing something, I want to, I'm all in. Otherwise I'd rather be at home, you know? So, you know, I worked hard and, and then, you know, they came to me and then, you know, there was an opportunity to buy it off the previous owner and, and then I moved forward. And then from there, the vast majority of my practices I've opened up from the get go under me where I've possibly worked with another doctor as a, an associate and then had the opportunity for them to be move up to an MCD and then in a nearby office as being that we, I go into with construction teams and stuff and talk to them about real estate and different potentials and then kind of move from there. So um, where Roma is in Pooler was the only office over in that area. And since then, you know, we've added in Hinesville and Rinkin and Statesboro and um, Savannah, you know, as well. So the markets continue to to grow. Yeah, great. Um, thank you both. So another question here is asking, are all Aspen Dental Practices insurance based or can you have the option to just focus on pay for service? Um, Dr. Patel, do you want to take that one first? Uh... I think you have, I'm not sure. I think all of them have taken insurance. I know that we provide discount programs for insurance companies. So participating if you're a network, we do discounts for them, but they also, we also have self pay patients. So we got a little bit mix of both. I think one of the, I'll say one of the big things with asthma is we're trying to break down barriers that keep patients from getting dentistry in the first place. And so a lot of those barriers are, you know, whether or not dental practices accept insurance. So, you know, as a brand, we accept uh, dental insurances. Do we don't? We're not a Medicaid or Medicare paid you know, office, but we do accept actual dental insurances and stuff. And uh, you know, we try to do things that will break down those barriers that kept patients from getting the care in the first place. Um, uh, whether that be insurances or whether that be um, you know, patient satisfaction is a huge part of our business. Trying to make sure everybody's as happy as possible because. Um, as I said before, patients don't necessarily like going to the dentist, so we try to make the experience as good as possible for them because as much as we're this big brand that has all this advertising and everything else, uh, at the local practice level, you're often a private practice, and word of mouth is bigger than all that. So if Dr. Patel and Pooler is you know, not doing what she needs to do to take, make, you know, to take care of patients, then that word of mouth is going to get out, and it doesn't matter how much we throw advertisements out there, patients are going to know, don't go there. So. Um, she does a great job of, um, you know, taking care of patients and doing good dentistry. And, and because of that, her practice continues to grow. Yeah. And I think that just ties into what I said earlier about how the dentist really is what makes the practice. 
Um, so the next question here is asking more so about equipment um, and kind of what's in the practice. Uh, are all Aspen locations fully digital? Uh, for example, digital impressions, CEREC machines, CAD cams, et cetera. Uh, Dr. Patel, do you want to take that one first? Mm -hmm. Well, um, we are definitely fully digital now <laughs> uh, with charting. I know we have our own program um, with that. And then we all, I think almost all offices have iTero scanners. So you can definitely do um, scans for crown impressions, some partials and things like that. We also provide Invisalign or is it sure smile? I don't know. One of those, is it Invisalign now? Sorry. I've been on we had some changes. It's, right? a, it's still Invisalign. You okay. can choose, but Invisalign is still the primary. Uh, okay, gotcha. Um, so we scan for that. And then uh, we don't have CAD cam. Um, I think our, our survey office does have a lab. We're primarily denture based. But we have lots of big contracts with lots of labs. So, you know, I think um, cost effectiveness is better by sending things out. With the digital, it's super, super easy. And, the, you know, um, the turnover on those crowns are, you know, five to 10 days. Yeah. And then, uh, Dr. Christie, is there anything you want to add on to that? Yeah, I mean, as she said, the, the Itera machine, the machines are in every single office. So she said that you can use those for both the you know, impressions for digital scans and Invisalign, but also for patient-based education so they can kind of see the cracks in their teeth or what's going on with the recession. Uh, we're also currently um, all new offices and some and, and backfilling offices are having cone beams installed uh, in all the offices. I know uh, Roma's got one in there too because we're, you know, continuing to uh, put a big investment on implants and implant training for doctors as, you know, that continues to be a growth market and obviously I think you know, most, you know, a lot of, a lot of people, new dentists, especially want to try, try those things out and stuff. And they're becoming easier and easier and more, more and more mainstream. We recently got a contract with CareStream and uh, Smith Martina, which is a implant design company. So you could take your comb beam, take your Itero digital scan, um, upload that um, onto the server and they'll help design uh, basically a surgical guide to replace an implant. Uh, that you can, you know, tailor to your own needs as some as well, but um, is ultimately you're the doctor in the final say, but they'll basically kind of dummy proof it for you. So you'll make sure that you're not going to blow out the buccal or lingual bone or go into a nerve. Um, so um, that makes it really good. And we're continuing to develop that. We're start, starting to do some major training in Chicago this year, but then COVID hit and kind of delayed the transportation group <laughs> gatherings, as yeah. you're all aware. Yeah. Um, so when he says Chicago, we have a practice support center in Chicago that we often send our de dentists for uh, CE courses for any kind of uh, clinical development. Um, and somebody's asking about CE courses, um, pretty much just asking, um, you know, who pays for it, what kind of CE is offered, um, you know, what does the implant and Invisalign training course look like, those sort of things. Um, but Dr. Patel, do you want to kind of dive into that in terms of, you know, CE and how that works with your owner and uh, just kind of go over that? Aspen does a great job of constantly providing us with CE. Almost all the CE is free. So that is awesome. Uh, whether it's live webinars or online, you know, courses that you can take, there's a website that you can log in all the time and get your CE hours that way. I know Jeb, you know, put together some implant CE courses that I'm assuming he paid for. I'm not sure I didn't pay for it. <laughs> so, um, you know, we went to Charleston a couple of times to take courses there. Him and I traveled to uh, Dominican to take some implant, um, like hands-on implant course there too as well. And then, you know, as far as people who are wanting to do the implant training, like you said, in Chicago, they had started training, you know, sending dentists in groups um, to get the hands-on training and things like that there. But I think with COVID that has stopped, but usually I never have an issue with CE courses because there's plenty that Aspen provides. Yeah. And then uh, Dr. Christie, is there anything you want to add on to that in terms of how CE works? What happens when your associate, you know, requests to do No, CE? I mean, there's, yeah, there's, as she said, we have a lot of regional type CE courses too, where, um, for instance, uh, we went to Greenville last year for uh, implant restoration um, uh, CE courses and 
Um, we did another implant one in, in Charleston, as she said. So, and not, you know, Indo ones, there's, there's all kinds of them. Uh, the uh, Invisalign course, I think we went to Atlanta to do that for a weekend. So they offer enough CE courses that if you just take the ones that are offered, you're never going to not have enough CEs. Like I haven't taken a CE course outside of Aspen in years and I've got licenses in six different states. So I've been able to keep up with CEs readily that way. Yeah, great. Um, so the next question here is asking, um, you know, what kind of procedures are you referring out? Um, Dr. Christie, you wanna take that one first? Well, the beauty is we don't have to refer that much out. And the reason is, is that um, the vast majority of our offices have an oral surgeon that comes into the office. And we also have endodontists that come into the office. So um, any of those extraction cases that you may not feel comfortable with or they need to be sedated, um, we have the oral surgeon come right to the office. So uh, that's great for the practice. Really, it's much better for the patient, though, because patients hate, you know, when they come into an office, they're in pain and you just hand them a note and an antibiotic and then say, go see somebody else. Um, they love that we can get them scheduled right away, uh, whether that be for the root canal or extractions or implant placements, et cetera, um, with our own specialists that come into the office. Outside of that, um, you know, sometimes we have to refer people to carry it on us if it's, you know, something that is beyond what we can do and um, something that they want to, you know, obtain or go after. Um, and, you know, other than that, obviously, if it's something that Invisalign can't handle, then we would, you know, refer them to an orthodontist. Um, but again, it's everybody's, every doctor's different. I've worked with some doctors that are older that were with asthma and been doing dentistry for 30 years and did, did wired ortho and knew how to do it and did it in the practice. So um, similarly with implants, you know, I've got some doctors like Dr. Patel that places a ton of implants on her own. So she doesn't really have to refer to the oral surgeon for implants unless it's a big, big case. Um, I know if I just wants to start getting into doing sinus lifts next year, she already hit me up about that. Um, so it's really what, you know, what the, the skill set of the doctor is and the dentist is at the time. So we don't limit kind of what you can do or can't do. Yeah. Um, doc, or yeah, Dr. Patel, is there anything you want to add on to that in terms of how you refer certain procedures out? No, what he said. Okay, perfect. Um, all right. The next question here is how involved are you in the business aspect of the practice? Dr. Patel. Well, as an owner, very involved. Um, you definitely, you know, I, like I said earlier, if you're just an associate or a lead dentist, you can be as involved as you'd like or not as involved as you want to be. And, but as an owner, I choose to be involved. You know, um, I want to know what's going on in my practice, how we can, you know, improve the business, um, where, I, where I'm losing money, you know, where we can cut costs, things like that. That those are things that I am obviously going to be concerned with as an owner. Um, but it really, like I said, that's why we have management team that takes care of everything for you. So you really don't have to be, you can be very hands off when it comes to, you know, being involved. Yeah, just really comes down to what you're comfortable with. But uh, Dr. Christie, so owning multiple practices, how does it work? Um, how involved well, I mean, I'm, I'm obviously very involved, but I, at the same time, you know, I think Roman knows this. I don't think I've ever once gone to her and told her, this is how you have to do it, or this is the way or the highway. No, it's I, I, I see what they need and try to support my doctors and, and help them out. And I, help, and I try to help them learn through my mistakes. I wouldn't tell them to do something if I didn't think it was genuinely going to help them and benefit them because you know, we're, it's a symbiotic relationship. If I'm not steering them in the right direction, then everybody's doing bad. So I really try to see and, and help as best I can. And again, that's part of the reason why I look for people that still want to learn. I'm still learning too, but if you're not open to learning, then we, then you can't be helped. And uh, you know, I'm still trying to get help by other people. And you know, some of the other owners are probably bigger micromanagers than me. I'm not, I tend to rely on, you know, my partners or my lead dentists or uh, my management team um, as opposed to micromanaging every single tidbit thing, because in some regards, like I know Roma will already do it for me. So thanks. Uh, thank you guys. Um, Okay, another question here. It's talking about expectations, which is a really good question. Um, what do you guys expect from an associate coming in in terms of procedures um, and just in general? Dr. Patel, do you want to take that one first? I mean, to be honest, I just expect basic skills. I know that it's going to take some time learning to be in a practice 
learning to see a higher volume of patients, you know, working with your hand skills and trying to hone in your dentistry. I know that all that takes some time. So I expect, like we just keep going back to, you know, this eagerness to learn and to grow. That is the one thing that I think will help any associate or new dentist thrive. So that's really my expectation is that, dr that drive and that motivation. But like I said, I expect, you know, for the new do dent doctors to be slower and to not know everything. Yeah, Dr. Christie, uh, what about you? What do you expect out of your associates coming in? I mean, it's kind of what she said. We just want people that are, that kind of want to learn. I mean, I've, it, I've had, you know, dentists that'll come out of an operatory room and say, I broke off those three teeth and I can't get them out. And I'll go, okay, well, let me go in there and I'll, and I'll sh show you. And they're already gone and they're in the back room, like drinking coffee while I'm going in there and doing the extractions, which I can do all day long, but I want you to want to learn and see how to do it so that you'll learn and you'll know how to do it next time. You know, if there's a denture that they're having problems with and, you know, they, they worked on and they worked on and then I come in and I just fix it and they're not open to me showing them what I did, then they're never going to learn themselves. So I really try to, you know, teach and learn them. And then, you know, everybody's different with their skill set. And Dr. Patel, when I started working with her, she hated doing extractions. The lady hated them. She was like, give me fillings all day long. I don't want to do the extractions. And now I go there and she's like, I'm doing all the extractions. You can do the fillings. So, you know, she loves to do them now. And she didn't, you know, she had maybe some basics in dental school, but you don't learn a lot of that stuff until you're out repetitively doing it. So, you know, it's, it's, she wanted to still learn and she did. And now she's gotten into skill set and then she's expanded that with implants and so on and so forth. So, you know, it's that constant hunger to continue to try to better yourself and anything I learned in life is going to lead to success. Yeah. Those okay. But let it, can I just throw this in there? There was one time he could pull a tooth and I had to go in there and pull it for him. That was the time I gave her self-confidence. It's been working ever since. Whatever. <laughs> oh man. Okay, our next question here. Um, what was your biggest hesitation about joining Aspen? Um, it's an interesting question. Uh, Dr. Patel. I think it's always going to be like this uh, when you come from a school that is always um, telling you how bad corporate dentistry or DSOs are. I think the hesitation is that those expectations are true. You know, I think I was scared that someone's going to tell me that this is, I wasn't producing enough or I wasn't doing enough crowns and things like that. Um, I was, you know, hesitant that it's going to be what they told me it was going to be like in dental school. And, you know, to my surprise, it wasn't. Yeah. Dr. Christie, what about you? Oh, I just figured I'd end up having to go back to like a football tailgate and have my classmates be like, well, you work for Aspen and make fun of me. Um, I can tell you that they don't make fun of me anymore. <laughs> <laughs> okay so do you recommend going into a gpr or straight into an associate role dr christie what do you think i already tapped on that i mean i think i mean the truth be told if if you can do a gpr and you know get paid next to nothing or you can come in and work in an aspen office and even if it's not right for you you're going to have way more experience. You're going to have see the real dentistry day in and day out. You're going to be working with someone, a mentor. And, you know, I think somebody said something early on or you asked something about contracts. We don't have per se contracts. Like there's no um, like restrictive covenant. If you come aboard and you work nine months and you decide, ah, this isn't working for me, but I love this area. I'm going to go get a job right down the street or I'm going to open a practice right across the street or right next door. You can do that. Um, but hopefully that's not the case. Hopefully you love it and you want to stay with the company and it grows, but there's nothing that's going to keep you from that area. Cause I've had to hire dentists there, tried to hire dentists that had, you know, a 20 mile radius or something and had to end up either moving or commuting an hour a day to go to another office, even though we had another office five minutes from their house. So, um, you know, it's an opportunity for you to learn and grow. And then if, if you don't like it, you leave with all that knowledge and instead of having to almost pay for it, you get paid for it. So, that's my two cents. Yeah. Um, Dr. Patel, is there anything you want to add on to that in terms of a GPR? Um, yeah, I think we already kind of touched base on that. Yeah. Really? It's up to yeah, you, it, you what you're looking for in a GPR. Yeah, absolutely. Um, okay, there's another question here asking, how does Aspen differ from other corporate dental offices? Um, 
Personally, I have no idea because I don't know how other corporate dental offices work. Um, do either of you? I think the, I mean, like I said, I don't really know how the other ones work either, but the one I did apply for did not give me the opportunity to own or partner. So that's the only thing I really know. And I think that some of the other ones also work based on um, production, like pay you based on production. That's, that's the only thing that I know, and I can't speak for everything, is most of them are, you know, you're based on solely the performance that you do. So solely the work that you get done. And I know that, and again, I'm not, that there's there's been people that I've hired that have worked in another DSO and and or even another private practice and you know since they were only getting paid on production they found that the senior doctor took all the high productive work and left them with kind of the leftover stuff because you know there was incentive for that lead doctor to do all the high end and expensive work because they would get paid more um, the way that we are set up is that we really try to create a team environment so we're all working together so if you come in as Dr. Patel's associate and there's some big extraction case and you want to do it, go for it. And she's going to be there to bail you out if you're healthy along the way. And um, she's not going to come in there and steal that big case from you. We want you to learn how to do it. We want you to increase your skills. You know, if you want to try it, if you want to do that bridge prep, go for it. You know, if you want to uh, restore an implant, go for it. You know, that's, it's, it's a symbiotic relationship. So the more you learn and the, the, the better it's going to help us us. Yeah, and that's what I've heard too in terms of um, only being paid off of your certain amount of production and um, oftentimes the the owner of the practice is taking those higher end cases. Um, thank you guys. So the next question, um, and this will be our last question because I do want to be respectful um, of our panelists' times. Um, do you provide loan reimbursement, Dr. Christie? Um, so... Aspen as a whole does have some loan reimbursement programs. It really is often dependent upon the need and location. So, uh, you know, that happens in a lot of jobs where, you know, if you're willing to go to middle of no, nowhere, Wyoming, you probably have a better chance of that than going to, let's say Charleston, South Carolina, where there's a dental school right there. Um, and there's, well, quite frankly, more dentists <laughs> and more dental students to choose, you know, to looking for jobs versus somebody that's wants to go to Alaska, you know? So it kind of depends. You'd have to talk to someone like Sammy to kind of see, uh, you know, where they're currently offering uh, loan reimbursement programs. Um, and then, you know, kind of go from there. Yep, exactly. Um, the harder fill locations are probably uh, going to offer more sign on bonuses, student loan reimbursement, if you're wanting to work in Boston, Miami, Charlotte, you're not going to see that because everybody there's a large amount of dentists. Um, but okay, I want to thank you guys all for joining. I want to thank Dr. Patel, Dr. Christie. I really appreciate you guys jumping on and volunteering your time. Um, but is there anything in closing that you guys want to add? Um, I know the students really appreciated it. I'm already getting some thank yous in the chat. Dr. Patel, is there anything you want to add to close? Um, I will say to the students, especially because you guys are you know, at the same school I am, don't listen to everything that the faculty tells you because to be honest, chances are they've never worked for Aspen or worked with Aspen. So I would say, you know, be your own judge of the practice and definitely um, try it out. It's been great for me. I have no regrets. You know, like I said, I'm going five years strong, a partner now, and um, I'm absolutely loving it. I enjoy dentistry and I think it's a great organization to work with. Yeah, and then Dr. Christie. Is there anything you want to add to close? Oh, sorry, I was typing an answer. I, I didn't realize I could type answers and stuff. Um, uh, I don't know what, what Roma said. Oh, I don't know. It's just, I mean, congrats, guys. You're almost done. Hopefully this year goes a little smoother than last year for you. And you can get more hands-on and, you know, uh, wherever you end up excited to you, excited for you. Yeah. Again, thank you guys both so much. Um, if you guys have questions later on, feel free to reach out. I'm going to send everybody an email with the recording of this. Um, but that's pretty much it again. Thank you guys. Um, take care, stay safe. Um, hopefully I'll see you guys in person, uh, for some in-person events, but thank you everybody.